Barbenetta, and I am Alberto Vasallo, who, and I'm sitting in for Byron Barnett, who is on assignment. I want to make sure that uh, people know that. The Justice Resource Institute is one of the largest human service organizations in Massachusetts, and recently, JRI created the Cape Verde Children's Coalition. Now, the goal is to help improve support programs for children on the island of Sao Vicente, and eventually across all islands of Cape Verde. It's, just part, it's part of the Justice Resource Institute's mission to work in partnership with governments not just locally but also nationally and also internationally. Now joining me this morning to bring us up to speed on the current status of this program are now he's a good friend of mine, James Figueredo. He's the co-founder of Cape Verde Children's Coalition and the director of Real Life Services, which is just another JRI program. And the other co-founder, David Nadelman, and his official title now is Program Director for the Cape Verde Children's Coalition. Welcome to Urban Update. Thank you. Thank Good you. Good morning. Good morning. And I want to start uh, with you, James, just to take me kind of through. For mm -hmm. those who have never heard of JRI, and I had not heard until today, mm -hmm. so this is for me as well. Take me through what the Justice Resource Institute is. Okay. So uh, J uh, JRI, or Justice Resource Institute, is an organization that's been around for nearly 40 years now, and we're a social justice organization, and we pursue social justice through a variety of different manners and different services, including operating over a dozen residential schools across the Northeast Eastern United States, offering trauma-related services which actually benefit the kids who are uh, trauma survivors in those schools, uh, offering a, a lot of HIV services in the form of housing, legal support, youth support, and peer support. The part that I operate is called Realize Resources, and that's the program I oversee is a capacity building part of JRI, and what we do is actually help build organizations and uh, build skill level among people serving marginalized populations and at-risk populations. And a lot of the work that we've done historically, uh, besides locally, it's been nationally and across a number of African mm -hmm. countries, in particular a number of the Portuguese-speaking mm -hmm. African countries. And it's just recently that we've, we've brought this work to another country where the official language is, uh, is Portuguese, Excellent. Cape Verde. Hey, we're going to get back to that. Uh, now I want to get to you, Dave because the pro you're the program director. Yes, sir. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about this specific program that, that you're in charge of right now. Absolutely. So I think the most important thing to know about the Cape Verde Children's Coalition is the fact that it's actually a partnership. Um, where JRI, we, 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 it's important for us to work with partners on the ground in Cape Verde. So the, so the most fascinating part of this project for me is that we are actually working hand in hand with the uh, this organization called ICA, which is the Institute of Cape Verdean mm -hmm. Children and Adolescents, and it functions as Child Services does here in the States. Okay. So we are working with, with the service providers and the children who are already inside shelters and in emergency situations. So these are neglected, abused, and abandoned children inside of Cape Verde. So once they come into the system, our goal with the Cape Verde Children's Coalition is to raise the standards and raise the level of care that the children who are already most vulnerable and in the most need are receiving day to day. So that's what we're building out here in Boston and uh, it's gonna be a, a partnership, as I said, between JRI and the Cape Verde Children's Services. I wanna clear it up right now, James. I'm gonna give you the opportunity. Cape Verde, Cape Verde, or Cabo Verde? Oh boy, it really depends who you ask. I, I'm stuck on Cabo Verde. Yeah, that's, God, what, I, Cabo that's Verde. what I grew up. Uh, I grew up calling it. Uh, but I, I've lately more. I'm vastly outnumbered. The majority sort of says. Cape Verde, so I'm, I'm starting to go with the majority. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and tell me a little bit about how you got involved with this, because I think through the whole networking is your initial kind of trips out yes. there and then kind of connecting the dots a little bit. Absolutely. So from 2005 to 2009, I lived in Cape Verde, uh, first as a Peace Corps volunteer. I got sent there. I didn't speak a word of the language, um, but immediately fell in love with the culture. I lived with the host family, um, did the whole Peace Corps thing, actually worked inside of ICA, so I was working in the shelters for my entire time in the Peace Corps. Uh, following that, I started a small business there in Cape Verde, returned back to the States in 2009 to pursue my education, and always knew that I wanted to return back to Cape Verde to provide the services and sort of connect the resources that America has to mm -hmm. Cape Verde. Um, so the way I, I brought this uh, to JRI and to James specifically was 
there's a great need in Cape Verde, and we're working with a lot of Cape Verdean kids here in the States. So we're already working with this population, and if we can connect the services and expertise that we have here in America back to Cape Verde, it's a win-win situation not only for JRI here in the States, but also for the Cape Verdean population, government, and also JRI as well. I thought when he said he fell in love with the country, I thought he was going to say, and I fell in love with my wife. Oh, uh, I met yes, like you should mention right? that as well. Yes, because yes. yes. she She'll be there. mad, yes. yes. <laughs> See how I help you out here? Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> no, and we're going to talk about your wife in a little while because there's a connection between Absolutely. his wife and uh, and myself, which I just found out. So um, stay tuned. We will talk about their wives and everything else. More information about this vital program going on in Cape Verde when Urban Update returns. The Justice Resource Institute's pilot program to improve already existing services on the island of Sao Vicente will be a model that can be used across all islands of Cape Verde. That's what we were talking about. That is the mission. Tell me a little bit about your recent trip because something very special happened. You formalized the partnership, right? Very recently? Right. Right. So after our initial trip, which was back in August, we returned David, uh, David Nadelman, myself, our colleague Sean Rose, and the president of our, comp uh, of our organization, Andy pond went over there we had a formal and televised uh, signing ceremony between the Justice Resource Institute and uh, ICCA or ICA which is the Institute Cavardiana da Criança e do Adolescente which is the Institute Cape Verde Institute for Children and Adolescents uh, that formalized this relationship along with this came an investment on the part of the Cape Verdean government to do a lot of the repair and restoration of an existing facility where our services will be offered. So for you, this must have been a very special moment because from when you first got there to coming back with that desire to do something and then you meet James and so forth. I mean, for you personally, this yeah. must have been very personally satisfying. Uh, this, this entire experience has been a dream come true for me. Um, I have always desired to be able to do something s sustainable and substantial back in Cape Verde. Uh, the United States, United States Peace Corps is a fantastic organization, but they don't hand you uh, bags of money and say, go make something happen. Uh, nor, does, nor does the Justice Research Institute, but what this has has provided me is an incredible opportunity to be able to bring an organization here in America who's doing really, really great work and take those same systems, those same processes, and bring them back to Cape Verde. Um, on a personal level, it, like I said, this has been a, a truly a dream come true for me, and uh, I, I, I never thought that at 30 years old I would have my dream job and be able to and to go do exactly what I want to do, and, and that's where we are today. So I'm a happy, happy man. You do seem very happy, I, I, I James. I imagine that the local Kiverdian community. Uh, knows about this and you've done some 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 kind of outreach and, and some publicity what's been the response phenomenal back in uh, I want to say it was in early uh, early December we actually had uh, a, an event at Cesaria restaurant a Cape Verdean restaurant in Dorchester we pulled it together in a very short amount of time had a representative from Ica from uh, from Cape Verde there at the, uh, at the event and uh, the flood of phone calls emails has been tremendous uh, people from the Cape Verdean community who historically have just been sending barrels to relatives in Cape Verde called us because they want to do something that's part of a larger more concerted uh, effort and something that they feel will be really sustainable and, and we've had a number of people who've really stepped up to the plate uh, since that event and have offered their help have offered some financial resources we still have a ways to go in terms of meeting our goals to get the place fully operational yeah and I was gonna I was gonna ask you that um, what are you looking for from the community or from local officials or from under I mean how could people get involved and help if they want to you know they're watching the show and they, they may want to get involved how would you suggest they do that so there's a number of ways, and, and one of one of you know there's there's three things we talk about for how people can really help. It's it's investing your time, um, your talent, or your treasure, and and those are sort of the three avenues that we that we've set up so people can can participate. Um, we have a website that's going to be launching in a couple weeks. Um, people can contact us. Obviously, we're providing the telephone number and email address for people to get in touch with us. But really, what we're looking for are people who have who have a network um, of people that they know here in Cape Verde. Um, know 
know here in the States, know back in Cape Verde, and people who really have a passion, people who believe that every child who exists in Cape Verde or here in America deserves the right to have a safe environment, to have adults around them who care about them, and to have protection. Um, those are the people we're looking for, people with passion, people who care about this, and also people who have some resources that they can help to vote back to Cape Verde, because I truly believe that every single Cape Verdean has the desire inside of them to be able to go back and give something back to their country, and this project really lends itself to that. Yeah, and I was going to come to James with that, is yeah. the community, I think this is a great opportunity for them to really get involved in a very formalized channel. Exactly. Right? Yeah, and what's been interesting for me is even outside of the community, there's been a lot of interest, because Cape Verdeans have been in New England for the last two centuries, really, so most people who live in Massachusetts have a relationship or know someone oh, yeah. who is uh, who is Cape Verdean? So there's a sense of connection amongst the uh, amongst a lot of people. So some of the people who've actually stepped up to the plate with donating time, talent, or uh, or treasure came from unexpected mm -hmm. areas. I think you know, for example, the uh, First Parish United Unitarian um, of Arlington. Uh, had us as one of their donor recipients. Uh, a couple of other organizations, a school in Arlington, the Hardy After School mm -hmm. Program, is getting their kids involved in fundraising for this uh, for this effort as well. Well, I know that we have a cameraman here, Paul Forte, who is uh, of Cape Verdean uh, descent. And you're right. I mean, growing up in in East Cambridge. I can attest to that. Now, before we go, we only have 30 seconds. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to give a shout out to your wife. Okay, fantastic. Hello, mm -hmm. I'd like to say I love you to RC. Uh, I miss you, and uh, I'll be coming home soon. <laughs> and as we promised, your wife used to work at El Mundo newspaper about 15, 20 years ago. I think my mother went to your wedding. I didn't know until a little while. <laughs> Gloria Acosta, right? That's right. I am happily married to Gloria Acosta <laughs> with two. Uh, with two wonderful children, Isa and Enzo, who are Hardy School children. Cape Verdean and Colombian. Love you, honey. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Keep the wives happy here. That's All true. right. Thank you so much.